Now is the time to refocus on mission. Now is the time for greater mission effort locally and worldwide. Now is the time to follow Christ's way of evangelism. Welfare Ministry, page 250, indicates angels of God will cooperate with those who are engaged in this work, who make every effort to save perishing souls, to give them opportunities which many have never had. There is no other way of reaching them but in Christ's way. He ever worked to relieve suffering and teach righteousness. So let's relieve suffering and teach Christ's righteousness, engaging in complete mission outreach. Time is of the essence, since Jesus is coming soon. We are chosen for mission. We read in volume six of Testimonies, God's work, God's people have a mighty work before them, a work that must continually rise to greater prominence everywhere. Our efforts in missionary lines must become far more extensive, a more decided work than has been done, must be done prior to the second appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. God's people are not to cease their labors until they shall encircle the world. We must now, by the Holy Spirit's power, proclaim the great truths for these last days. It will not be long before everyone will have heard the warning and made his or her decision. Then shall the end come. We're continuing with the quote. It is the very essence of all right faith to do the right thing at the right time. God is the great master worker, and by his providence, he prepares the way for his work to be accomplished. On pages 29 to 30, it says, the missionary spirit needs to be revived in our churches. Every member of the church should study how to help forward the work of God, both in home missions and in foreign countries. The Church of Christ on earth was organized for missionary purposes, and the Lord desires to see the entire church devising ways and means whereby high and low, rich and poor, may hear the message of truth. Why should not the members of a church or of several churches unite to sustain a missionary in foreign fields? All in the Seventh-day Adventist Church are chosen for mission to proclaim the three angels' messages in anticipation of Christ's soon return. God gives us the chosen for mission marching orders in Jude 20 to 25. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, despite the future attacks on the mission of the church, God will see his remnant church through to his second coming. Regardless of the slippage of biblical beliefs and practice by some, regardless of the shaking and the sifting, God is directing his final mission, which will not fail, despite the attacks from within and without. So my dear fellow leaders, be connected to God's mission by every means possible. Taking place throughout this whole world, literature distribution of great controversy, mission refocus, mission to the cities, comprehensive health ministry, back to the altar, total member involvement, global TMI disciple-making outreach. I will go strategic plans for finishing God's work through his power, through the regular missionary program of the world church, and many other outreach activities because we are chosen for mission. As indicated in... 2 Thessalonians 2, 13 and 14. God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining 
of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1, 3 to 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him. We can hear the approaching footsteps of Christ's return. He has chosen us for mission. The prophet heard God speaking those mission words in Isaiah 6, 8 said, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? God was asking. Leaders and church members, will you respond to God's call for mission? Repeating with Isaiah, Here am I, send me. Yes, Lord, I will go and be part of your final appeal to the world because I am chosen for mission. If that is your deep spiritual conviction. Would you quietly stand with me right now? Thank you, Lord, that before the foundation of the world, you chose us for salvation and for mission. Thank you for leaders who are willing to stand by the Bible and your holy word, which represents the living word, Jesus Christ, even though the heavens may fall. Lord, give us a passion for mission. Now I entrust these leaders and your church into your hands. Help us to stay faithful to your word as we proclaim the soon coming of Jesus. In Christ's name, we ask it. Amen. Amen.